Look, I'm sorry, okay? There it is, an apology. <laughs> Apologies are not easy. Uh, it's funny because it's one of the things I'm trying to do with my kids is raise them to be able to really feel comfortable apologizing because it can bring up so many things for people. Uh, anyway, uh, that, uh, that aside, I do apologize. I apologize for taking this video down so quickly as I did. Uh, this, so I'm gonna do a brand new kind of little intro here, once again, uh, presenting the butterfly cut video. Uh, I put it up several weeks ago, I uploaded it here on the channel, and I was directly connected with one of my retail promotions, a limited time thing, and I didn't wanna confuse people, so I took it down only after a few days. And since then, I realized what a mistake I made because I've received bunches of emails and DMs on Twitter and all that stuff saying, hey, where's that video? I was just practicing it, went back to it for fine points and it's gone. So here it is. And this time I will leave it up because uh, I know you guys love this kind of flourish uh, and I use it all the time. And this way uh, you can really come back to this in a week or a month or a year, it'll be here uh, and you can work on the fine points. Okay, here it is without fur further ado, Drum roll, please. And here's my sound of a drum roll on a distant planet. The history of magic is filled with crazy people. <laughs> I mean, what sort of people get into doing magic and trying to deceive people and illusions and staying children and all this kind of thing? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to live in an era where the only access we had to magic was books. And I'm the first person to say that I think learning through books is not better, it's not superior to DVDs and videos and all this, it's different. And I think they both had their virtues. One thing for sure is there's some very advanced sleight of hand that's I think much easier to learn now with video than it ever was in books. There's one example. But I would read all these books as a kid and it was fascinating to come across and read about all these different personalities. And there was a guy, of course, Paul Harris, big hero of mine. I'm sure if you're into magic, even for two days, you've heard of Paul Harris. Uh, he was a real inspiration to so many of us. He, I think of Paul Harris as sort of, a, before Paul Harris, there was Harry Lorraine. And Harry Lorraine, a brilliant card man, However, there was a dryness, a demonstration quality, poker hands and this and that and this, you know, there's a bit of a wall it seemed between Harry the Rain and, but with Paul Harris, that wall vanished. It was all about connection and imagination. It was very cool. And there was another guy, Mike Skinner or Michael Skinner that I first heard of through Paul Harris. And Mike Skinner was this kind of crazy, brilliant close-up magician, beautiful chops, technical chops. And he also worked for real people, you know, so he was great at connecting people. So I've heard Paul Harris's name connected to the butterfly cut for sure. But I've also heard people say that Michael Skinner had an influence on this as well. So I just want to mention those two gentlemen, Paul Harris, Michael Skinner, in, in relationship to this uh, really beautiful flourish. Um, this is an interesting flourish because it works in this direction and it works in this direction. And I can still remember after practicing a lot, one Charlie A cut, the other Charlie A cut, then getting it together. I can still remember when it started to flow for me and I started to share it for, with people. And the reactions, the response to this particular flourish is really cool. It's really cool. Other thing to keep in mind is, you know, when you do these things, whether or not you're demonstrating skill or just doing a trick or whatever, is you're trying to cast a spell, not just on other people, but also on yourself. You're trying to believe, not necessarily that you do impossible things, but that what you do is inherently amazing. You're trying to believe in that inner magician in a sense. So I find uh, this is the kind of flourish that when I do it and I do it while I'm connecting with someone and I'm not even thinking about it and I just kind of do it, it is another one of the many ways I lull myself, I cast a spell on myself to dare to believe that I am a magician. The deck starts in this position. I'm holding it pretty much, I guess, it's on its side here. It's not lying flat though, it's sort of lying on its side, I guess vertically, a parallel, uh, a parallel to the floor would be perpendicular, perpendicular to the floor. Okay? My first finger's curled on top, my thumb is on the edge, my three fingers are here. Okay? My fingers come together, tips come together. What's beautiful about this flourish is its symmetry. You kind of are always trying to get, when you're practicing this and you look in the mirror, you want it almost like a Rorschach ink blot where both sides are doing their crazy things, but they reflect each other. It's almost as if one hand is up against the mirror and the beauty and the symmetry of that is part of its uh, visual appeal, I think, no small part. So I come over and I'm gonna riffle off half the deck. It's gonna come down to the tips of the left fingers and then come up so the hands are mirroring each other, okay? 
here we'll fall off about half down and up okay. now i'm going to do two charlier cuts i'm going to let both and i found let me tell you a little bit about the charlier here let them drop is i found my hands were so small that what really helped me maintain this is by moving my hands from this position to when I push these, what you don't want is the pressure on the top packets to be so great that the very second they clear, they want to fall. I find what really helps me is to roll, is to let them cut, and then tilt my hands back a little bit. So what that does is it means that rather than being here, by pushing them up like this, I find it gives me a little bit more finger room. So, we know the first part. Roll them out, up, two Charlier cuts, and instead of letting them close up on, I push my first fingers, the first fingertips of both hands are going inside. You're gonna find that is gonna require a bit of a stretch of your fingers. We roll, we cut on both hands. Pinkies are at the end there, keeping things nice and clean. Both first fingers are put in as it all closes. Take a moment to readjust. If you're practicing this for the first time, bang these on the table, get your four packets nice and clean, okay? First fingers in the middle, pinkies at the end. Now with the first fingers in that position, what I can do is I can push with the first fingers, release my grips with the thumb, and these both fall down. Right hand packet on top of the left, like this. Take a moment to square this up. It is being held at the front, not at the very front, but maybe a three quarter mark between the, the tips of both first fingers. Now this is the part when I teach this to people, they get confused about. I'm gonna push up with the tips of the middle fingers. I'm pushing up and flipping forward and bring your wrists together. When you're practicing this, don't keep your hands like this, bring your wrists a little in and you'll find, you'll get that extension you need. Then the thumbs of both hands move from above the packets to below as you kick and you kick and then close. Roll out, two charliers, first fingers in. Extend, forward, flip, flip, and close. One more time. Here. Roll, note the grips, two charlets, let them fall, push them up, don't let them close. Tilt your hands back if you need to get that extra beat before the first fingers go in. Take a moment to square these. Flip, does it, you know, and I, you can do the right hand first, left hand, I don't think it really matters unless you're trying to control, because with this you can keep the top card stock, like for example. You got a selection four of hearts on top of the deck. See if I get this backwards. That's right. It's still on top of the deck. One last time. Performance speed. Paul Harris's and Michael Skinner's. Beautiful butterfly cut. To learn the secrets to another very cool card magic flourish, watch this video right now. You're gonna learn the secrets how to fire a playing card out of a deck, sort of like a bullet out of a gun.